Hey guys, and welcome to the ultimate showdown between two fearsome competitors. On the left hand side, leading the forces of Imric and his high elves is Glorious Feeder, up against the central scrutinizer and the dark legions of a Warriors of Chaos. Should be a good fun showdown all round, I think, a pretty tricky matchup for the Hail Forces, so I'm pretty excited to see what they bring to the table. And of course, leading the line in glorious regal armour, as always, actually trotting through the water, it would seem here, is Imric on horseback, and I generally think this is the best way to play Imric. Yeah, it's slightly more thematic to have him on his gigantic dragon, but boy oh boy, does this Dragon Prince mount look disgustingly cool. And he's going to be coming in with Dragonhorn as well as Lord of Dragons, and I think his buffs and debuffs are really the best thing about Imric. He can still pack up decent punch as well on horseback here, but how will he fail, fare up against the mighty Colex Sanita? Front line shall be white lines. White lines do combine quite nicely with Imric due to that dragon horn buff he can give them to turn them into absolute lawnmowers. Gigantic war axes should be able to cleave apart the chaos thick armor. The Fluffer and Seaguard in the secondary battle line looks like three units backed up by double Phoenix Guard, no less. Phoenix Guard can be quite powerful here. Uh, alongside Imric, we do have a Mage of Light coming in with Far's Protection, Shem's Burning Gaze, and a Net of Amantok. Net always good. Any kind of trap spell that nets an opponent in place tends to be very competitive. We have the Heralds of the Wind, some of the fastest cavalry in the game in their glorious red and blue colour scheme, charging forward here into the rear, trying to look to eye out maneuver and out snipe enemy skirmish cav, which we have a few of. If we're going to look at the Chaos Forces, we have four units of Mortal Horsemen in the back lines. We do have the Weird Spawn as well, who are the Regiment of Renowned Chaos Spawn, rolling dirty here with Colex Sunny to Big Papa Colex himself, the god of the Dragon Ogre kind. And he can certainly bring a punch even to Imric, who's designed to target him. Imric still is an elf and rather squishy. We do have a Chaos Sorcerer of Fire, kind of a Burning Head and Fireball, and a Chaos Chariot on either side. Chaos Chariots can do wonders up against the light mass of the High Elf Forces, who tend to just get pushed to the side. Chaos Morrows do lead the front line, dotted all the way along, backed up here by triple Chaos Warriors with great weapons. It looks like a Shem's Burning Gaze is going to be traded here with a Fireball. We'll have to see if they connect, and if they connect mid-air, which would be particularly cool. And um, Babush, you know, they go for each other. The Chaos Sorcerer Lord taking a decent amount of damage there. Fireball does come in and connect with the Mage, so a bit of an even trade for the most part between the Chaos Sorcerer of Fire and the Mage of Light. But now the battle is truly about to get underway as the White Lions charge recklessly forward. Follow your commander, these screamers. Imric leads the charge on his own, and he may well want to just hop onto some Chaos Marauders. Nope, he's going to flee backwards and start to retreat away from the enemy. Heralds of the Wind have a very important job. They need to kill all these horsemen, or at least distract them long enough that the battle is won before they can inflict too much casualties. In the front line, Marauders are raising those shields to absorb some of the damage from the Lothran Seaguard, and the White Lions get countercharged rather effectively by Chaos Warriors with great weapons, and they're pretty elite all round. We do have a net come down on the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. This is going to buy time for Imric to blow his Dragon Horn and charge headlong in after that Chaos Sorcerer. Trying to do some decent damage, but in comes Kolek, swinging back as well as the went around Chaos Spawn. Imric needs to retreat out of this very dangerous situation. White Lions across the board can be performing really well because that lovely buff. 24 extra melee attack makes him 62, that's pretty scary. But the head does go down on Lothran Seagull, roasting both units in fact. That is a glorious cast. Oh my god, the disgusting damage from that Sorcerer. A bit of middle finger there to Imric, who has far as protection, but... Far clearly is not mighty enough because he's taking an absolute hammering. On the right hand side, Chaos Chariots are getting pinned in place by Phoenix Guard, which is a fantastic little catch here by the High Elves. But now the Chaos Chariots are simply going to fall back. Heralds of the Wind do dart dangerously into combat with the Horsemen, but get countercharged rather effectively. But I do like a little hit and run strategy coming in here. Imric is alone in the middle up against Kolek, and he's taking massive chunks of health dripping off him. He's going to have a real bloody nose by the end of this. Nice pressure though coming down on the spawn by all the Lothran Seaguard and now a really clutch net coming down by in time for the Phoenix Guard to intercept and Imric to survive. Lothran Seaguard for the most part are happy and firing but that won't be the case for too long with Chaos Chariots reaving around this right hand side. Reavers also getting shut down in the back line and the white lines seem to be dwindling. One thing really going quite strong though for the forces of the High Elves is these Phoenix Guard. We've got a lovely little pocket here. But oh no, a Burning Head's going to catch this unit. Oh, it's disgusting. The Burning Heads have been so well played today. 
by the central scrutinizer so far. Lothran Seaguard also getting a little bit roasted on the way through. But the guard did manage to uh, take down the Chaos Spawn for the most part, which is really good news. Now, where is Imrek? I'm sure he's still alive. He is. He's getting pretty danger close, though. He's trying to hunt down those chariots, and now he's going to get surrounded by horsemen. He needs to be careful. If Kodak makes it over to him, he does not stand too much of a chance. And even the Mage of Light Magic is going to have to get in here to help support up against some lonely horsemen. And Imrek is fleeing for his light. Run, Imrek, run! He screams to himself as Kolek Sun Eater charges downhill but gets stopped here by a rather jagged rock and Imra con contemplating to see if his ego is as big as his stomach and going after Kolek. Lord of Dragons has gone down so he's decided to engage right now which I still think is very risky. If he takes one successful hit he could well and truly be down but the minus 40 melee attack is neutering Kolek quite nicely and Imra decided to stand and fight Dragonhorn has been popped as well, and he managed to just about scoot his boot away there. In the distance, the Mage of Light, though, is, has been caught now by the Double Horseman and has been forced off. And I don't know if Imrit's actually going to be able to escape this. He is constantly being hounded by the Sun Eater, who no longer has those debuffs popped on him. Imric really needs to try to flee. Beautiful micro here by the Chaos Chariots bouncing between the Phoenix Guard. You can see the section on the left-hand side did win, but at what cost? These Phoenix Guard are so beat up right now, and Colex still has 4,100 HP. There are some strong white lions going uh, decent in the back. Heralds of the Wind are somehow still fighting, and may well now get the support of the white lions to uh, aid them in uh, dragging down this Chaos Sorcerer, who's popped Scholar Children, but may indeed go down, which would be a little bit of a disaster. Kolek is wasting a lot of time trying to chase Imric, who is dancing around the battlefield, going through the swamps of dead enemies and foes, and, uh, and friends as well, most likely. Kolek, unfortunately, not quite quick enough to catch the mighty Imric, particularly with a net going down. I do like this net, because it should hopefully allow the Phoenix Guard to go over and support, but Imric wants to get in there first, and does come in and receive a big old whacking for his troubles. Another glorious burning head does go down the line, but it actually misses the Lothran Seaguard this time, due to the good micromanagement here of the High Elf player. And the Phoenix Guard have now once again emerged upon Kolek, trying to surround him, and Imric is going to be charging in one more time, but the last time, and Imric does bite the bullet and go face down in the dirt, and Kolek rather wisely is going to retreat back from the Phoenix Guard and simply start shutting down the range. Shut down all the units that can uh, cause you big problems, finish them off and leave the Phoenix Guard to the end, but there's not that much left on the forces of the High Elves. In the distance we have some uh, horsemen who can return, but for the High Elves we've got White Lions who are wavering, 22 Phoenix Guard who are broken, there's still three chariots, and this is a big, big problem for the High Elves. These guys can just bounce to and fro in different engagements and really start to rack up that damage. A lot of the Lothran Seaguard are now running for their lives, and Codex has 2.4k health. Balance power very heavy at the moment in the favour of Chaos. There's a decent amount of Mordor Horsemen left of ammunition and they just need to pour that on. Soak and drown those Phoenix Guard in javelins. Just There's no need to fight them head to head. Though balance power is pretty even at the moment. It seems like the Mage of Light is rallying a few of her troops here. Whilst also driving away some more Chaos Marauders. But... It still looks so rough. Phoenix Guard over here are basically out of the battle. We have Horsemen returning. The Chaos Sorcerer should come back as well. And one or two more good burning heads are put through these Phoenix Guard. And that is simply game over. The High Elf player not out of it yet. But certainly can't afford to make any mistakes. Chaos Warriors do just about have enough in the tank to beat back these white lines. A little bit of help with Terra as well from the mighty Kolek. And the Javelins are now really do need to start focusing down this Phoenix Guard. And that looks like it's just what the Chaos player has ordered. Marauder Horsemen just going to start throwing, throwing in, trying to do damage where possible. Phoenix Guard are going to be trying to retreat here, it seems, to, uh, well, one, to try to rally these troops, but also to the tree line where maybe they can be protected. Now, it's a little bit scary having all the Horsemen bunched together, knowing your opponent has that net of Amantok, because if it gets overcast and they're a little too close for comfort on the Phoenix Guard, the Phoenix Guard could butcher these Horsemen very, very quickly. Kale Sorcerer is wavering quite low at this moment. May well receive a Shem's Burning Gaze. And the Wizard Jewel does continue. And this time, all the beams connect. And down goes the, the magic for Chaos. That is absolutely huge here. Kolex Anita needs to go over here just to support the horsemen. Say, you're right, lads. I'm right behind you. I've got your back. Don't worry about these pesky Phoenix Guard because they're already wavering and they're not even in combat. 
Looks like a few higher forces have rallied in the form of the Sea Guard. And we could be seeing a little bit of a turnaround here. The Sea Guard can do a fantastic job at picking apart the enemy horsemen. And then you simply box in with the Phoenix Guard to try to deal with Colex Sun Eater. Mordors are being chased away by the Phoenix Guard, who are now going to be pulling back once more. Lothra and Seagard do manage to finish off the Chaos Marauders, who have shattered at the moment. And if we have a little look around the rest of the battlefield, there's a few units which may come back, but they're all pretty beat up at this point. I don't expect them to get anywhere near the fight in it before they once again break. And now there's going to be a situation where the Horsemen want to use up all of their ammunition, constantly firing into the Phoenix Guard. But because the Lothra and Seagard have rallied, they're going to be able to... Uh, pull their bows back one more time and launch arrow after arrow into the already wavering horsemen who have taken so much punishment this game already by those pesky heralds of the wind and it looks like the horsemen may well break here. Kolek needs to try and find an opening to swoop up and around through the trees and slam down on the Lothran Sea Guard because if they're able to survive the horsemen aren't going to be able to do anything to the Phoenix Guard there's still 55 or 54 now of these bad boys remaining. Kolek shall be leading the charge here with some Chaos Marauders, bomb rushing it through the trees and Kolek just bouncing back and forth here, not really too short to do. Marauders shall now engage with the Phoenix Guard, which is the perfect opportunity for Kolek just to push his way through, but it seems like he wants to break the, ba the backbone of the Phoenix Guard right here. Stand or, or, or die has been popped on the Marauders. That does increase their mirror defense considerably, so they should be able to fight the Phoenix Guard relatively comfortably, at least for the moment. The Chaos Wards are forced off, all the horsemen are gone, and I don't know if Kolek's got enough in the tank here. Ammunition is running dangerously low on the Lothran Sea Guard, though. Only two am uh, volleys left, two on this one, and Kodak still has 1,800 health, but he's surrounded by Phoenix Guards who hold the line in the trees, using their trees to prop themselves up. Bloodied, wounded, and uh, pretty damn knackered. They are exhausted, but strong that they still hold. Star Crusher is active by Kolek, but... The Phoenix Guard morale is holding firm up to 82 kills on these bad boys and Kolek starts to waver. Phoenix Guard twirling those vicious halberds around, cleaving bloody gashes in the, the flanks of Kolek Sun Eater. Now he is relatively heavily armoured for a gigantic beastie, but some of the guard, even though they're getting knocked down by this gigantic beast, simply get back up and say, no, not today, you shall not pass. And Kolek says... Okay, I'm going to retreat and get the hell out of here. You guys seem like some pretty scary elves. And it shall be a Pyrrhic victory for the forces of the High Elves. So that was an awesome game. Very well played there to Glorious Feeder and the Central Scrutinizer. Two people who've been around for a very long time in the multiplayer community. Always good to see these guys in action. And I am a sucker for an Imric replay. I think Imric's such a fun character. Super arrogant, super like over the top, but you know, he often can kind of prove his enemies that he has the right to be this arrogant. Hope you guys enjoyed, we'll go through the damage dealt and damage value in just a second, but if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a fat thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we have loads, loads more glorious Total War Warhammer content that is going to be coming your way shortly. Feel free to comment down below as well, what was your favourite moment of the battle, who was your MVP, what do you think of this matchup in general, or simply just yell quack at me, I do really enjoy reading all the replays, they're one of those things that really do get you motivated, and you're like, ah, oh, Hell yeah, like, like all these like people enjoy my stuff, makes me want to make more of it. There are links down below in the description as well. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon, as well as a, a few other links as well to kind of uh, Games Planet, where you can get the newest DLC, which is coming out. In fact, in fact I think all the Total War Warhammer DLCs are at the moment, and Total War Warhammer free at a discounted price. It also feeds money back to support the channel as well. There's also links to my Discord, where you can submit replays, get involved in events and tournaments I host, chill out with a load of cool people, and see some really cool pictures of ducks. But anyway, guys... Let's have a little look. So, Mighty Imrec, one kill. Just just the one, which, you know, compared to Colex 69, is a little bit disappointing, but still 1,342 damage value, buffing up those white lines as well to enable them to really carve apart the enemy. He did, you know, decent. Pretty decent, indeed. Plus, he did fill up, live up to his name, I think, by challenging Kolek over and over again to single-hand combat. The Major Light just about managed to win that Wizard Jewel, that glorious Shem's Burning Gaze in the la later quarters. But again, the damage value doesn't reflect the importance of this unit in the battlefield because those nets came down at really clutch times to keep the High Elves in the game. As for the White Lions across the board, solid damage value, nothing too crazy, to be honest. The highest, kind of 700, the lowest down in the uh, 500 range. 
Both the Phoenix Guard did relatively solid 900 damage value on this one. Not paying for themselves, but it did eat a pretty tasty burning head to the face. The other unit of Phoenix Guard, though, 2,117 damage value. Yeah, that's that tasty stuff right there. Lofren Sea Guard, 650, 765, and 1,100 damage value. Impressive display by them. And the Heralds of the Wind so did surprisingly well in combat and also held back a lot of the enemy skirmishers for a really long time, which was absolutely massive, because if those skirmishers got onto those Phoenix Guard, it was going to be game over, getting nearly a 1,000 damage value on this unit and 60 kills. Very impressive performance by the Heralds of the Wind. As for the Central Scrutinizer, uh, Central Scrutinizer, Jesus, if I can speak today, uh, Kolek did get 69 kills. 2,112 damage value, which is pretty damn impressive as well, but did spend a lot of the mid game just aimlessly kind of chasing Imric around, where it probably would have been better just to smash the remainder of the Hail forces and force Imric to come back home and defend his people, where Kolek could then be waiting to finish him off for good. Chaos Sorcerer of Fire was probably my MVP during the battle. 2,253 damage value, some really well placed burning heads, destroy unit Phoenix Guard, as well as forcing off those Lofren and Sea Guard. Unfortunately, the rest of troops couldn't really capitalize on the, Theos, the um, Fire Sorcerer's good work here, and the Marauders across the board kind of failed to pay, off, pay for themselves. And the Chaos Warriors of Grey Pens, that, you know, okay. 650 damage value, 800 and 666, making the Chaos God, Gods rather proud there. The Chariots did some really good initial backline pressure, but eventually got caught here. 553 damage value is not too crazy, but the other one, 802, is far more impressive. As for the Skirmishers, doing pretty solid across the board, two of them really faltering, uh, getting caught out by the Hells of the Wind, but the remaining two, 646 damage value, 616, nearly clutching it in the end game. And it's always good fun as well to see the Regiment around Chaos Spawn, units you don't get to see terribly often. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed, until next time, peace peace, and as always, stay awesome.